Well, just five years ago, Chris Hewn came within touching distance of the Liberal Democrat leadership. Today, his parliamentary career lies in ruins. And his resignation from his Eastleigh constituency means there will now be a by-election. And a very interesting one at that, because it will be the first head-to-head -head fight between the Lib Dems and the Conservatives since the coalition was formed. And just to warn you, there is some flash photography in this report from our political editor, Gary Gibbon. These allegations are simply incorrect. The allegations are simply incorrect. I'm innocent of these charges. Today, the denials ended, and so did his political career. I'm shocked and saddened by what's happened, uh, but I believe that Chris Hewn has taken the right decision in uh, resigning as an MP. They were the Lib Dems' golden boys, first elected in 2005. Within two years, fighting for the crown. Why did you Chris, say you wouldn't Chris, rule out Chris, self, let me social finish. insurance? I have then. said it. I've said it countless, countless times. I said it to you yesterday. I've said it on my website. Yes. I've said it. But hang on. Can I, with respect, Chris, this contest is not about me meeting false challenges which you put up to me. And the number of votes cast for Chris Hewn was 20,477. By the tiniest of margins, Nick Clegg defeated Chris Hewn. Some wondered whether the older man was ever truly reconciled to that. Mr Hewn, how did you get on with your Tory colleague? Very well. Appointed Energy and Climate Change Secretary when the coalition was formed, his relations with Tories weren't always this smooth. Ministers. You've got in Chris Hewn someone who cares passionately about this agenda. You've got an A year later, after the voting system referendum, Chris Hewn laid into the Prime Minister and the Chancellor at the Cabinet table, demanding they disassociate themselves from the No campaign. After a few verbal assaults, the Chancellor hit back. This is Cabinet, not some sub-Jeremy Paxman interview. I think we should get on with it. Even in political death, Chris Hewn adds to coalition tensions. His resignation as an MP means a critical by-election in his Hampshire constituency of Eastleigh. I used to always vote Lib Dem here at Eastleigh, but I certainly wouldn't go for another Lib Dem without being sure of their, um, well, their integrity then. I think it's a great shame that he's lied for so long and it's taken so long to come to court and say that he's, he's guilty, and I think he should resign. With Labour in distant third, this looks like being an acrimonious contest between the two coalition partners, and the stakes are high. If David Cameron doesn't win here, his critics will say it's proof he can't lead the Tories to victory at the general election. But Lib Dems are dug in, dominating the local council. I think the Lib Dems would still do just as well, with or without someone doing something silly or, or whatever and, and moving on. So I, I think that they would do well in this, this, this area anyway. I think they'll win again, yeah. Seem to be fairly unshakable, I'm afraid. For every hundred crimes committed in Britain today, just one criminal will end up with a conviction in a court of law. That's a 99% chance of getting away with it. And if you don't catch offenders, no amount of threatening punishments will work. He had been the party's law and order spokesman. The Lib Dems lose one of their most combative performers. Beneath the confident aura, he must always have known it might end this way. Gary Gibbon, we're joined now from Westminster by the Liberal Democrat President Tim Farron. Uh, Tim Farron, it could, of course, have been even worse. You could be talking about your leader tonight, but by a hair's breadth, you're not. Uh, but the truth is, you have lost a heavy hitter and you've lost an awful lot of reputation for integrity. Well, I think we're all stunned. I was certainly stunned. Didn't expect this to happen this morning at all. Uh, and I know Chris will now have to answer for this in the court. It's not for me to pile on condemnation uh, on that which he will otherwise receive. But yeah, he, he's been a, a tremendous MP for, for Eastleigh. Uh, and the campaign team there are outstanding and we'll miss him. Uh, we will miss him in Parliament but you know we've heard what he said today and it's only right that he uh, meets the correct response. But for you this must have been a slow motion road crash of the worst possible nature. I mean leaving out the terrible human cost for his own family. The party must have wondered at some point can we intervene in some way? Did you try to lean on Chris Hume to try and sort it out at a much earlier stage? Well, I guess if someone protests their innocence, uh, we believe in this country, don't we, that you are innocent until proven guilty, then that's what I and others would have accepted. I, I think, as you rightly say, the real tragedy in all this is the situation for the family, and that is what worries me, I suppose, amongst other things at this moment, is that uh, you know, Chris and Vicky's children should not be dragged into this. Now, the, 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 I mean, it, to put it kindly, it isn't as if you're overstuffed with massive talent. 
and whatever else he may be guilty of, Hewn was some sort of a talent. Uh, and you're now confronted with a by-election in East Lee, and you could find uh, Mr. Farage on the heels of the Conservatives, but still possibly letting them beat you in that seat. Well, we'll, we'll have to cope without the talent, but there you go. Uh, I mean, in, um, in East Lee, all I can say is we take absolutely nothing for granted, and the fact we take nothing for granted, and Keith House and the local team there uh, have been so successful simply because of that. They work unbelievably hard. Uh, and I, I don't know what's going to happen in the by-election contest, but if you think that we gained, what, two seats off the Tories last May, three seats off them uh, the May before, this is post-co-election local elections, we're talking about an extremely good team down there, and we will be working our socks off. When awful things happen to the Lib Dems like this, we're pretty good at sticking together and going out to win again. And Labour are sort of dead duck down there, are they? Well, I would imagine that if you are a Labour supporter in Eastleigh, you know that if you don't vote Liberal Democrat and if you did vote Labour, then the only likely outcome is that you let the Tories in through the back door. Let me bring you some cheer. If Labour win that seat, they'll have a 326-seat majority at the next election. OK, you, you, if, if Labour won it, I'm not sure that's cheer for me. It'd be cheer well, for Well, that Willie would Bank. be cheer because it's so improbable as probably not likely to happen. Indeed. I mean, so it reminds you, doesn't it, the kind of the, the mountain that Miliband... Has to has to climb, but no, it's, right. it's clearly a Lib Dem Tory marginal. We'll wait and see what uh, what it, the outcome is. We don't know when the date will be. We'll be throwing the kitchen sink at it. Right, Tim Farron, thank you very much for talking to us.